It's February 4th, 2024, and my maple season is underway. I've had the lines up now for about a week. Um, I'll show you what they look like. I've got more lines in this year than I had last year. So last year I tapped 100 trees. This year I've done 251. And I hope it's showing, but you can see and probably hear that the sap is flying in right now. It's absolutely perfect conditions. It's going down into the lower 20s at night and it's up in the upper 30s, um, maybe even 40 uh, in the day. So it's running really well. Um, I need a haircut this year. Uh, I've been up here for too long. Got snowed in and everything, but uh, did manage to get my taps in. Um, changed a few things up this year versus last year, aside from the uh, the increase in the amount of taps. So I've got a little better uh, deal going on with my tank farm here, but um, hopefully next year it'll be even better and under roof. Uh, instead of having a horrible mess with tubing going in kind of a W shape. I've got actually a decent pipe here and things can move. Um, I've got three tanks hooked in series and just had them almost overflowing. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I bought a, I don't know if I can get a view here. I bought a old milk tank uh, from somebody, a farm up in Ohio this year. I think it holds something like 300 gallons. Um, it's pretty nice, stainless steel. It's all angled down to the, the drain here. You can open the lids and, and clean it really easily, which is one of the really bad things about the IBC totes. Um, this is gonna be my feed tank for the evaporator. Let's see, I've got a much, oops, almost dropped my phone, um, a much, Actually, I just realized that I should probably turn this the other way. Um, simplified route with tubing going into the evaporator. Um, the other thing that is different this year is I actually managed to get the sugar shack closed in on both the front and the back, which will hopefully make a huge difference uh, in terms of running that thing, um, comfort, cleanliness, all that sort of stuff, not having 80 mile an hour winds blowing through when I'm trying to boil. Um, the other thing is you can see down there, I've got a cement pad. It's only big enough for the evaporator. Um, I've got some bricks on the floor, thankfully from one of my neighbors, Julie, um, over about two thirds of the floor that should make it a lot nicer uh, versus the mud mess I had last year. Um, and then a couple other things that are different um, because I increased the amount of taps that I did, um, I went and got that, which is a reverse osmosis concentrator. Uh, I had the fortunate circumstances last year to have a very small unit on loan from the local university that was a game changer. Uh, unfortunately, it was also like crack cocaine and once I got a little taste of it and saw that I could run that instead of standing in front of my evaporator for hours and hours and hours and hours, um, it, it made me had to get one. Um, and they're not cheap. Uh, I've just spent the last few days going through a nightmare um, trying to get that actually running. That's my second unit because the first one I had was broken from the dealer. Um, it was a refurbished certified unit that had some issues. Um, and so now I swapped that back out and this one's brand new and seems to be working really well. Uh, what that does is it takes up about half of the water every time you run the material through it and you can run it um, up to about 8%, eight bricks. And I normally start somewhere about one and a half to 2%. So um, each time I go through it, I lose half the water, which means I have to boil half the time. And my evaporator runs about 30 gallons an hour. So if I have a thousand gallons and I run it through once, I only have to boil 500 gallons. 
If I run it through twice, I only have to boil 250. And if I run it through three times, which is what should be the max to get it up to eight, um, then obviously I only have to boil 125. So that's a huge amount of time um, savings and a lot less wood and all that sort of stuff. So I'm really um, putting a lot of expectations on this thing. And now that I've got it running, um, hopefully it will uh, prove to be worth what I paid for it. But what comes out of the machine is concentrated sap. So that's right here. So this stuff is about double what it was going in. And then this is essentially pure water. So it's, uh, think of it as distilled water. Um, the other thing that I did this year is I uh, mentioned closing in the sugar shack. So it's kind of a mess right now, but um, that's the front. Uh, last year I had those vinyl tarps. Um, it was better than nothing, but not much. Um, the other downside from it not really sealing very well is it made that place dark. Uh, I couldn't see anything. So what I've done is I've used polycarbonate roofing panels, um, which is not the prettiest thing in the world, but it lets in a ton of light. Um, and then you can see I've got my bricks. Uh, unfortunately, I'm on clay. I don't know if you can see there's a curve here, but when we first put them down, I had about a half inch clearance with the door. Um, that's right here. And when I came back to try to get in, the ice had heaved the clay up and, and um, moved the bricks up and I almost couldn't get into the sugar shack. So um, actually I need to sweep off the concrete still, but I've got the evaporator ready to go. Um, again, it's on concrete this year instead of dirt and rocks. So um, I'm really moving up in the world. So hopefully this will be a lot better experience. Um, the other thing is I've bought uh, 40 gallons worth of um, old Coney kegs, which is what like uh, soda concentrate comes in for Coke and that sort of stuff. Um, they're stainless steel, they seal up, and uh, theoretically I should be able to store syrup in there forever. Uh, so that really should help out in terms of um, storage. So I'm not using, you know, buckets like I did last year and that sort of thing and have to worry about bears coming and smelling it and getting into it and whatnot, which luckily didn't happen last year, but I'd rather not uh, press my luck. So um, I had three totes almost overflowing. By the time I got my RO worked out and you can see, see, they've been running for about two hours now, the RO and my totes are a little under half full. So two hours of running off of my solar power versus, I, I don't even know, probably eight, nine hours of uh, boiling just for this one pass. So um, huge benefit. Uh, we'll see how it works for the rest of the season. But that's it right now. I'll probably make another uh, little installment here once I actually get this concentrate run through a couple more times and uh, get it boiling tonight. Um, that's the one downside. Once you concentrate, you kind of have to boil. You can't let it sit because it will start to spoil a lot quicker than what raw sap will because that sugar content's high and yeast and that sort of stuff will get in there and start making um, alcohol through fermentation and, and uh, lots of the critters around like to eat sugar. So, um, Hopefully this is interesting and uh, I'll make uh, another couple videos, probably one of me boiling and uh, we'll see something about bottling or uh, where that goes. So 